So my name is uh, Rul Bats, or Rul Bates, as people in the US would say. I'm a professor at Ghent University, Belgium, and I'm also associated with IMEC, which is a, a large nanoelectronics research uh, center. So my field of work is photonic integration, more in particular silicon photonics. So we, we develop design, uh, we develop technologies, design chips, and do that for a very broad range of um, applications. Uh, we also have been very heavily involved over the past 10 years in sort of creating an open access mechanism for uh, silicon photonics in conjunction with iMac. Uh, obviously, silicon photonics has uh, most of its reason of existence stems from uh, interconnect or optical communication, uh, both in very short distance, uh, meters or tens of meters or hundreds of meters, as you would encounter in a data center, but also for larger distance telecommunication, that's where really the, the bread and butter of this field really is. That's the reason of existence, that's where the money is today, and, that's the, the, and, and, and that is what drives CMOS fabs to actually develop a platform. It's one thing to have a CMOS uh, fab, it's another thing to have a, a, a stable and mature flow for making uh, silicon photonics chips in, those, in, in such a fab. So, Given that there is now this demand from the, uh, data, the, the data communication, telecommunication field, um, there is already now an emergence of uh, industrial uh, services being created in, in various places around the world for, for this field. But indeed, uh, we realized uh, quite a while ago that there is so much more you can do with silicon photonics. Um, and uh, the most obvious case here is the broad uh, and a very rich field of sensors. Sensing whatever you want to sense, name it, and there's probably a way you could, you could do it with light. And if you can do it with light, then it makes sense to bring in a chip, because a chip simply means that you can make a fairly complex system very compact, um, make it very reliable and robust, and do so at the end of the day at very low cost. That's the essence of photonic integration of silicon photonics in general. And in the field of sensing, there are so many opportunities. And it can be biological sensing, medical sensing. It can be environmental sensing. There are so many examples of where uh, silicon photonics can be uh, made to good use uh, in that field. And I really believe that it's a matter of time before that will be real big. When you only address one market and one type of uh, device, then obviously it's easy to standardize. But especially when you move into sensing, the requirements for different sensing applications, it could be biosensing, it could be spectroscopic sensing, it could be LIDAR, it could be OCT, it could be laser doubler vibrometry. There are so many types of sensing and they do not necessarily require exactly the same platform. Um, and, and the most obvious example of this is that they do not necessarily require the same wavelength range over which they operate. Silicon photonics traditionally is a field of telecom wavelengths being 1.3, 1.55 micron. But if you move into sensing, there are sometimes very good reasons to not work at those telecom wavelengths. And it could be shorter wavelengths all the way into the visible, or it could be longer wavelengths all the way into the mid-infrared. And then, and then there is a natural tendency to call for variations on a team. Uh, still silicon photonics with the meaning that you still use the technological portfolio in a CMOS fab. Uh, but not necessarily the conventional silicon insulator based uh, silicon photonics. You may, for example, want to work at shorter wavelengths and then silicon is no longer transparent. So you have to replace silicon by something else, being, for example, silicon nitride. So that means that we need uh, f various flavors of silicon photonics. But at the same time, you shouldn't go too far with that because if you dilute all the efforts, all the money, etc., too, too much over different platforms, there is not enough for each platform to become a really stable, mature, performant platform. So we have to find uh, an, an in-between compromise between diversification and standardization. So that's one challenge. Silicon photonics so far is still very much a field of custom designed chips. So it's not just getting the chip made, somebody has to design it. Um, and there the, the, the barriers to, to really find ways to get a custom chip designed are, are still quite large. And, and, 
and of course, we see the emergence of design companies that will take that burden for you. That's one solution. Another solution may be that gradually we, as has been the case in electronics again, that we move to sort of generic chips that can do sort of a certain breadth of functions all built into a generic chip. So, so that for a company it's not necessarily necessary to, to, to have a fully custom designed chip. They can choose from commercially available generic chips uh, which perhaps are programmable. Think of FPGAs in the electronics field. Um, and with that you, they can serve uh, their, their applications. It's interesting to think about cost structure in this field. Um, often people say silicon photonics is only good if you have a very high volume product. If you have millions of chips to make and then of course silicon photonics make, makes a lot of sense. I don't agree. I really strongly believe that silicon photonics makes a lot of sense even for moderate volumes. Um, of course not if your volume is a hundred or a thousand pieces then probably you're in trouble if you want to use silicon photonics. But as soon as you're in the several thousands to ten thousands I really believe that the cost structure of a CMOS fab is such that you already hit low price per chip already at those relatively small modest uh, volumes. And that's something that is quite obvious if you look at the cost structure of how people make uh, products for telecommunication and data communication. Um, especially in the telecommunication field, the volumes are not in the millions. They are perhaps rather in the 10,000s or perhaps 100,000s. So that's moderate volume. And even there, there are already quite successful cases of companies using silicon photonics. And we can learn from that and it will be very relevant when you enter into the sensor field where at least in the beginning some of these fields will not be millions. They will be thousands or ten thousands. Although even in the sensing field there, are, there will be cases where high volume will be relevant. Think of, think of biosensors. These are use once chips. Um, they, they are disposable chips. And they will be small, they will be simple and they will be very, very cheap. We talk about a, a chip cost of well below, well below a dollar. Uh, and that is that's the result of the cost structure of a CMOS fab.